Do you want to tilt your opponents before laning phase even begins? Well, my friends, you've come to the right place. Hello summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Irene and today I'll be showing you 10 strats that you can use to get first blood and secure an early lead in your ranked games. With these concepts, controlling ranked games will be significantly easier and lead to more victories. Now for our question of the day, which champion is unbeatable in lane after they get first blood? I'm gonna have to go with Darius on this one. It's hard enough to beat him with no lead, but it seems impossible to handle if he gets any kind of item advantage over you. Leave your answers in the comments below. We'll be reading a lot of your responses. Lastly, make sure to check out ProGuides.com. There we have courses from your favorite professional players like Doublelift and many challenger level coaches who can take your gameplay to the next level. We also have daily live classes from top tier instructors like Zyrene and Mike Young. Don't miss out on these great opportunities to improve and join the community. Now with that being said, let's jump straight into the video. In order for us to talk about this topic, we need to give you some context as to what cheesing is. So what is cheesing and how does it relate to getting free first bloods? Simply put, cheese is a dairy product derived from milk and produce in a wide range of flavors. But cheesing in League of Legends is executing a pre-planned strategy that is out of the ordinary to catch the enemy team off guard for free kills, and if they know about it, it's very easy to stop. There have been many instances of this happening in professional play in the past, but today we are going to give you the right tools and game knowledge to execute these plays in your ranked games. Let's begin with number one. Okay, so the idea here is to do a late invade on the enemy's starting buff. This works on both red side and blue side, but we'll be using red side in our example. This specific cheese strat is actually really effective and I see challenger players falling prey to this very often, so it'll likely net you an easy kill in your games. So firstly, you wanna sit in the river bush until about one minute and 25 seconds and start invading with a red sweeper. From here, you enter the enemy red buff and immediately try to blow up somebody on the enemy team and steal their first camp. This cheese works most of the time and will net your team a kill, red buff, and a level lead. Generally, the supports you want to use for this invade include Braum, Thresh, and Pike, because they'll secure kills that would have gotten away. Our advice here is to focus on one target to create a numbers advantage. After that, look to zone the enemy jungler away and secure the buffs before heading out. Make sure to place some wards in the enemy jungle as you're leaving. This next one ran rampant during the Camille jungle days, best known as the Red Buff Level 2 gank. If you didn't get the concept from the title, you simply complete Red Buff and immediately gank one of the adjacent lanes for a free first blood. Nowadays, champions that excel with this strategy include Jarvan, Graves, Twitch, Kindred, Lee Sin, and Xin Zhao. Let's break down which lane you may want to gank and all the bases you must cover before approaching the two lanes you can gank. Step one, first, you always want to ward the enemy blue buff to see if they start it. No need to place anything fancy here, just as long as you can see if they start it or not. Step two, reset and purchase a red sweeper, which will be available for the gank once you are done with red buff. Step three, while you are doing red buff, pay attention to the wards you placed on their blue buff. From here, we branch into two scenarios. If the enemy jungler starts on their blue buff, ganking the adjacent side lane on that side is not a good idea because you don't have any clean transitions to camps after the play, so you need to gank mid. Step four, if you do gank mid, turn on your sweeper as you enter the river and do your gank. You will normally pair your execution with flash to make things quick and clean to sweep that first blood. If you only get a summoner spell, don't be afraid to wrap around between the enemy raptors and mid wall to gank a second time. For the second scenario, if the enemy jungler does not start on the blue buff, you have the option to gank the side lane because you can cleanly transition to their blue buff afterwards. If so, go in for the gank and get that advantage. Whether you killed the enemy or only got a flash, the lane you just ganked will have priority, so you can use this to now invade the blue buff. Let's say you don't play jungle, but you're a top laner. This next cheese is done in the top lane brush, where you look to catch the enemy top laner leashing and taking the greedy path. This cheese works most effectively with Conqueror Champions because you're able to stack it much faster. From here, the enemy face checks the bush, auto attack, and use your abilities after to surprise them and profit. Just make sure you don't attempt this on somebody who can out DPS you over time, like Darius or Jace. Similarly to top lane, this is the exact same thing but for bottom lane. This strategy is most effective with strong 2v2s, such as Zaya Rakan or Lucian Braum. Again, wait for the enemy bot lane to walk through and pop all your abilities on them to catch them by surprise, and voila, you flash over to finish somebody off and get free gold. But let's say you can't all in and only have poke like Karma, Vel'Koz, or Lethality Varus. 
In this case, the ADC and support can throw out their poke and run away for a small advantage in lane that can be abused to slowly out-sustain the enemy or even lead into that kill. Before you do any of this, just make sure to communicate to your jungler to kindly start on another camp so he's on the same page as you. This one's called the blue side cross. This one's going to be quick, but very effective. The strategy involved is very niche and specific to Camille, Gragas, Rakan, Silas, and Shen. The point is to use your engaging ability to get over the wall and wrap around an unsuspecting enemy. From here, you wait for the cooldown and push in from three angles to kill the poor soul who never saw it coming. The key thing is to communicate the cooldown used to get over the wall so nobody shows prematurely, scaring off the enemy. Use this in your ranked games to send a message to the enemy team that you guys mean business. If you're on the red side and you are playing either Blitzcrank or Pike, reposition inside the Dragon Pit and place a ward slightly over the wall in hopes the enemy team doesn't see it. After the enemy's leash, if they walk over it, hook that free LP over the wall for a free summoner spell or kill. Don't be afraid to let the enemy flash away because you can easily kill them later during the laning phase with that summoner spell advantage. Again, just make sure to communicate to your jungler what your plans are so that they are on the same page. One of my personal favorites that I actually love seeing is when the top laner sits in the bot lane brush, waiting for the enemies to finish leashing and come bot to a nice surprise. This strategy involves characters with some form of CC or heavy damage level one, like a Scion, Jace, or Kled. Your goal here is to wait until the enemy bot lane walks up and execute your abilities on them. Make sure the top laner gets the kill here because you'll reset and purchase an extra item and teleport back to the top lane. Again, make sure the jungler knows this is happening because he'll not have a bot lane or top laner to leash any of his camps, so he may need to instead solo raptors or wolves. If you are the top laner, make sure when you teleport back to lane that you catch up in experience before you fight aggressively with your item lead, because the other guy, he might hit level two first. Next up, similarly to the red side invade we covered earlier, we are instead bringing this to the top side. You wanna do the exact same things of entering at one minute and 25 seconds and turning that sweeper on only to cheese the juicy LP from the enemy team. Make sure you have a champion that has a strong early game like Renekton, Jace, and Darius, along with a jungler that can follow up to make this work. Remember, your goal here is to secure a flash or a kill and steal away the buff to garner an advantage over the enemy team. If you do this, you may notice it is very common you will not run into anybody when attempting this cheese, but it will put your jungler ahead because nobody on the enemy team will notice, meaning the enemy jungler will path to his red, wondering where it went. But the few times the enemy are there, that dopamine rush will never get old. This one is very uncommon, but many people will fall victim to this because it almost never happens. This strategy involves being on blue team with a ranged jungle, ADC, and support. So you guys can use this advantage to cheese the opponent. Your goal is to invade at one minute and 26 seconds through the river and poke the enemy team, forcing them to leave. From here, you secure the blue buff for your jungler and maybe get a kill or two if the enemies try to fight back. Ah yes, the classic level two cheese. This is super common and surprises me to this day that LCS players still fall victim to it. Regardless of the roles in lanes, if you have a strong pick that can get the wave pushing early on, you will likely reach level two first, giving you the ability and stat advantages. From here, you engage on your opponents and gain a huge HP lead, if not a kill. When it comes to the solo lanes, after the first waves have been cleared, the first melee minion on the second wave gets you level two. For bot lane, it's the third melee creep on the second wave. It's at this moment that you will level up your second ability and go in for a heavy all-in. A lot of the time, this will result in a kill, and if not, it's a huge health advantage. Let's break it down into even more concise steps. Make sure you attack each melee creep once and make sure you always have a three auto attack advantage over the enemy. This means if the enemy attacks once, you match with one attack, also after you have the three attack advantage. After that, make sure you pinpoint the seventh minion and focus it down. As the seventh minion is almost dead, start sprinting at your opponent. Level up your second ability and do the deed that will skyrocket your gameplay to the next level. And lastly, if you notice that you can't get the push going and you are losing the early push, make sure you respect the enemy's ability to cheese you and back off and soak experience until the wave comes into your tower. Some champions that you're gonna wanna play to use these strategies in each role include, in top lane, Renekton, Kled, Darius, and Jace. Mid lane, Syndra, Zed, Silas, and LeBlanc. For AD carry, Lucian, Draven, Ezreal, Kaisa, and Kalista. And for support, Alistar, Thresh, Pike, Blitzcrank, Leona, and Morgana. 
Looking back on everything we talked about today, you now have the knowledge on how to get free kills, but it will heavily come down to you recognizing which one can be best applied to any given game. At the end of the day, after all is said and done, you'll still need to play out the game normally, even with the small advantage you got. That's gonna be it for today's video about the 10 cheeses that you can do in solo queue to get first blood. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to join our Discord below where we do tons of coaching giveaways and community events. Lastly, don't forget to visit our website at proguides.com where you can receive coaching from pro players, watch live classes, and improve from courses with professional players. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Good luck in your next few games and happy cheesing. Thank <laughs> you.